Okay, uh, so in this lecture we define the oscillation of a function and uh, this is really all about continuity uh, of a function, uh, but, we're, we're, uh, but it's a more nuanced approach and we're, we're approaching it this way uh, because we're, we're going to be uh, working with uh, uh, what's called the integral uh, of a continuous function. We're going to be proving uh, continuous functions are integral and we, we will need to get a, a bit more nuanced uh, when we uh, do do some technical theorems there. Uh, start out with uh, just a lot of definitions, okay? Let s be a subset of the real numbers and let f from s to r be a function. Suppose that a is a subset of s. The oscillation of f on a is the least upper bound of the set uh, <coughs> of absolute value f of x minus uh, f of y <coughs> whenever x and y are elements of a. Okay, so we're looking how far they can get apart from each other and so this is sort of the maximum distance that f can take points apart from each other on the set A, we denote it by osc f comma A. Okay, so to get the oscillation at a particular point, uh, take A element of the set X and define the oscillation of F at A to be the greatest lower bound of the oscillation of F on the set A minus delta comma a plus delta, that little open interval, for every delta greater than zero. Uh, we will denote uh, the osc of f at uh, this by, again, the, the, the same notation. We're just replacing the set with uh, the, the little, uh, with the point, okay. So it's, this is, this is kind of m mind muddling, but on a set, it's the biggest that can get away, uh, but uh, at a point, it's, it's the smallest as we, we vary the delta and let delta get small. So big, it's kind of a, it's an oscillation, kind of a big small. So it sort of works, okay. Um, <coughs> now, uh, one thing that's gonna come in handy, note that the oscillation of F at A is gonna be bigger than a number H. Uh, only when uh, the oscillation of f at x minus delta x plus delta is greater than or equal to h for every delta greater than zero. Okay. Also note that the oscillation uh, of f at a uh, is equal to zero if and only if for every delta greater than zero there is a uh, epsilon greater than zero there is a delta greater than zero uh, such that the oscillation of f on x minus delta x plus delta is less than epsilon. Okay, so this allows us to uh, get ourselves a new characterization of continuous functions. Uh, let f uh, from s to r be a function and let a uh, element of s uh, be, be an element of s uh, then f is continuous at a if and only if the oscillation of f at a is equal to zero. Okay. So first suppose uh, that f is continuous at a and let epsilon greater than zero be given. Uh, since f is continuous at a, there is a delta greater than zero such that if x minus a is uh, in absolute values is less than delta, then f of x minus f of a in absolute values is less than epsilon over 3. Now suppose that x and y are both in uh, x minus delta x plus delta. Then x minus y, uh, x minus a in absolute value and, and y minus a in absolute value are both less than delta. Okay. Consequently, the f of x minus f of y in absolute value is equal to this, this uh, item we get by adding a clever zero, which is less than or equal to f of x minus f of a 
in an absolute value plus f of a minus f of y in absolute value. As these are both less than epsilon over 3, uh, their sum is less than 2 thirds epsilon and consequently uh, our f of x minus f of y in absolute value is, is less than, uh, well, is less than epsilon. All right, so let's go the, uh, get the conclusion of this. Okay, the, uh, since uh, the oscillation of f on x minus a, uh, x plus a, excuse me, uh, of f on a minus delta, a plus delta is less than epsilon, it follows that uh, the oscillation of f at a is less than epsilon. And since our, our choice of epsilon is arbitrary, it follows that, that the oscillation of f at a is equal to zero. Okay. Now, um, let's go back the other direction. Suppose the oscillation is equal to zero. We claim uh, that f is continuous at a. Uh, let epsilon uh, greater than zero be given. Since the oscillation of f at a is zero, there is a delta uh, such that the oscillation of f on the open interval x minus delta, x plus delta is less than epsilon. Uh, suppose that x minus a is less than delta, then it will follow uh, that uh, f of x minus f of a in absolute value is less than epsilon, and therefore f is continuous at a. Let's now segue to a, a new but related concept, that of uniform continuity. continuity. We say that a function uh, f on, uh, from a to r is uniformly continuous on a if for every x greater than zero there is a delta greater than zero such that whenever x minus a, uh, uh, excuse me, such that x and y are element of a, and uh, x minus y in absolute value is less than delta, it follows that, uh, the th that f of x minus f of y in absolute value is less than epsilon. Okay. So uh, a function can only be uniformly continuous on a set. Okay. So how then is this related to continuity? Well, we have a theorem, the, the main result. Suppose that f uh, on a closed interval from a, b into r is continuous at every point of that closed interval a, b, then f is uniformly continuous on the closed interval a, b. Okay. Uh, what we want to do, we want to find the delta that makes it uh, uniformly continuous. We start, challenge ourselves with an epsilon. We will find a delta greater than zero such that uh, x minus y in absolute value less than delta and a less than x less than y less than b implies that f of x minus uh, f of y in absolute value is less than epsilon. Okay. Since f is continuous at every u element of the closed interval a, b, there is a delta sub u such that if x minus u is less than delta sub u, then f of x minus f of uh, u in absolute value is less than epsilon over 4. Okay. Let u be the set of all uh, open intervals uh, u minus delta u, uh, u plus delta u for every u in the closed interval a, b. Okay. Then u is an open cover uh, of x minus, uh, of the closed interval a, b. By a previous lemma, there's a partition p, uh, a equal to uh, x naught, etc., uh, uh, less than x n, less is equal to b, such that for every i 1 to n, there is a u sub i element of u that contains x, the, the subinterval x sub i minus 1, x sub i for some i. Let delta be the minimum of all of the 
the delta xi, that is all of the uh, xi minus xi minus 1, okay? Okay, it's now our chore to see if this delta works, okay? Uh, before we test delta, let's make some observations. Uh, suppose x and y are, are in uh, the subinterval xi minus 1 to xi, uh, then uh, x and y are both contained in the same u sub i element of u. Let's now choose a point u element uh, of uh, the closed interval a, b so that u sub i is equal to uh, u minus delta sub u, u plus delta sub u. Then, okay, the, uh, then f of x minus y of x in absolute value. Uh, well, first of all, we, we insert zero here, then this should be a less than or equal to, guys. Oops. Okay, so uh, we get that this right here, f of x minus f of u in absolute value, and f of u minus f of y in absolute value. Since uh, u is that close to both x and y, uh, these differences are both less than epsilon over 4, and so the total di difference here is less than epsilon over 2. Okay. Uh, now suppose that x minus y in absolute value is uh, less than delta, then either uh, x and y are both contained in the sa same subinterval of p, and we're done, or they are in adjacent subintervals. Okay. Uh, say that x is in uh, uh, the ith subinterval and y is in the i plus first subinterval. Okay, then we, we do our calculations uh, uh, that, that um, okay, uh, f of x minus f of y, uh, xi must be uh, less than epsilon over 2 and f of xi minus f of y in absolute value must be left less than epsilon over 2. Therefore, it will follow that, you, that, that f is uniformly continuous.